Hey y'all, uh, sumo peeps I guess included. Um, this is actually going to be a departure from my usual sumo tutorial or whatever it is that I do. Um, I'm going to do something with Photoshop Elements because I've been getting a lot of questions <laughs> lately on how I've been doing these frames um, that I've been doing in my images lately. And they're actually all stock from Photoshop Elements, the $99 Photoshop that just about anybody can afford. So I thought I'd show you. This was made pretty much um, in Photoshop Elements. I um, um, didn't use any of the frames. This is actually just kind of a background that I put a metal finish on. But let me quit, get started and I'll show you very quickly how to do that. So let's start a new image, or a new blank file, sorry, and we'll do the stock or default Photoshop element size here. So next step, um, I have normally up here something that says, um, gosh, in here I can't talk. Uh, well, I'll go here. These are all the things that you can't have open, and what we're looking for is content. So here's content, and sometimes you can you can move this around. I can also take this and put it over here. Content includes backgrounds, frames, graphics, shapes, text, and show all. But for now, we're going to do frames, and this is where removing it from this is kind of nice because we can expand it and get a better look what we're looking at. So these are all the frames that are available to us. If they have this yellow band here, that means that you have to be part of Photoshop Monthly or something, but it's something that costs money, so I'm not going to do it. So let's just find a frame that we like, that we think we could use on other things, and we'll make it, we'll play with it. And so these frames are great, by the way. They, they don't really need to be messed with, but messing with stuff seems to be what I do. So, I should have prepared for this a little bit, but I am sure those of you that have watched my videos know <laughs> I don't really know what I'm doing half the time. I just do shit. So, and actually, I use this one lately. I use this one. Let's go ahead and use this one. And we just double click it. And voila, that puts it in our frame. So, next trick right click, simplify layer. And what that does, it, it lets us alter it, make changes to it. If we hadn't done that, we could actually drag another completed image in there and it would automatically center it and frame it for us. <coughs> but we're not going to do that. We're going to mess with this frame. So next trick, take your uh, magic wand tool, select all that white area, edit, cut, so that we have just our frame. Now this frame looks a little bit rustic on its own, but what we want to do is make it more rustic. And I'm going to show you some of the tools that I used to do that. So first we select by hitting our um, command key and then selecting that we select our image here and that would be a control key I guess on Windows and we start a new layer. Now we take our brush tool and you can see I've already got some flower brushes up there from the last thing I did. Let's load brushes <coughs> and I'm going to go to my desktop and I have some ones pre-done here. And these are grunge brushes. These are all from DeviantArt. I'll try to include some some uh, links on this video just so that you can find some. But really, if you just type in blank Photoshop brush DeviantArt.com, you'll come up with all sorts of stuff. So let's go ahead and first we're going to go take our grunge brushes here. <coughs> Excuse me. And these are literally just kind of rough textures. So we've selected the image. So on this next layer, we're only going to be painting on that. So let's make this a little bigger, smaller. We're just trying to dirty it up basically. Let's give it sort of that little bit of age. And another cool thing to do is go to our bevels. And just kind of bevel that a bit, just sort of gives it a little bit extra oomph. And if you want to, you set that on overlay and it kind of adds a little bit more color. And I think we like that. So we're gonna go simplify and we're gonna merge that down. So already we've changed our frame a bit. Next we're gonna try some other brushes. Let's do eggshell. And these sort of have a peely paint kind of texture to it. So those are fun to work with. So let's go ahead and start a new layer and Let's go ahead and take this off overlay, choose normal, and you can see we're just sort of adding some cracks, I guess. I think I like the other crack brushes better though, so we're going to go ahead and choose 
Crack Three Brushes by Hawks. These are a little bit more complex. But we left that a little too big, so we're gonna go back a couple steps here. And see how we're just sorta just every once in a while changing it up a bit. And like that last stroke. Okay, so we've definitely got a cracked old frame here. Oh, crap. And I have to go back because I needed to do that on a separate layer. So let's go back before all these cracks here. And let's add a new layer. And let's start all over. Isn't this fun? This is the way Photoshop is. Redoing, doing, doing again. And it must be, must be meant to be because that's how things work out. Okay, so on that layer that we have the cracks, let's go ahead and do a bevel on it. So yeah, that just adds a little highlight and it sort of brings up a finish like maybe the varnish is peeling a bit. And we could go to overlay, see what overlay looks like on that. Again, it adds some color. We can do soft light. We can really play with this stuff and kind of see what we like. See, now the whole thing has more of a metallic finish, I guess. We can try darken. There's really all sorts of stuff, but uh, I'm going to go with overlay for now. And let's start a new layer. And this is a standard brush here. This is where if I want to add some patina to it. So let's take some of these brushes here. And this we definitely want to go back to overlay. And reduce this a bit. And let's choose a nice green to kind of... Kind of give it that tarnished effect. And your bracket key. You can adjust the size here. And let's choose a more, you know, say, rust color. And you can see it's looking kind of crappy, but that's okay. It'll change here in just a minute. Now what I want to do is adjust the blend mode, and let's try a few. Let's try overlay. Looks kind of good. Screen. Yeah, looks interesting. Multiply. Looks kind of cool, too. Pin light. I kind of like that because it just has hints of the colors. Difference is always kind of interesting to try, but that just sort of see, stays the same. Yuck. Linear burn. You know, I think I like that, and I'm going to go with it. So let's merge. Merge visible. Select, deselect. Okay, so here's a frame that you could go ahead and save as a PNG file and use it many other things. Um, has a few cracks, a few tarnished things, sort of like a copper type frame. But just to give you an example of what we can do with it, let's go ahead and once again, command select. So we're selecting these pixels, and let's choose this upper layer here. And I just want to take a white paint bucket, and we're going to press paint bucket. You can see I've just done that. Now let's deselect, and let's paint bucket the center of it. And you keep pressing until that little line goes away. And let's move our frame up over above and see how we have white underneath our frame. So we can add things within that if we were to select. Select just that white portion. Now let's say, let's file open. Um, let me get something here from, let's see, here's a picture of something that I had earlier. Okay, that's a picture there again I made in Photoshop. Let's go ahead and select this, and let's drag that into that, and let's, whoops, let's go edit, undo, select, deselect, and what I want to do is take this picture, move it a little bit more over here so we get him in the middle. Select that portion, and that looks good. So we're going to select inverse, edit, cut. Not cut command because no pixels were selected, so that means we need to select the picture. Edit, cut. Ta-da! And now let's move the frame back over the top, and there you have it. 
So those colors are a little bit too close for me, but what we could do again is add an effect to give it a little bit of a oomph. Drop shadow takes it take, makes the frame more three-dimensional. We can adjust that by double-clicking there. And let's go ahead and add some distance. I know I should have centered that better, but this is just for an example. So you can see a very cool frame with the picture. Again, we could add another layer. Actually, let's drag that layer all the way to the bottom. And we'll put a gradient there. Let's choose black, let's choose this. And let's see, we'll do this. So the light is coming down this way, that's the way our shadow is, so it looks pretty good. Enhance, adjust color, hue and saturation, let's colorize, give it some color, yeah, I don't think I like that, let's leave it kind of plain like that, enhance, lighting levels, let's lighten it up a little bit, no, don't like that either, I say let's just leave it like that and blur it. And if we want to kind of texture that up a bit, we'll just go filter, noise, add noise. Noise is always nice to just sort of give it a little bit of a wall texture. We can make it wild or we can keep it calm. And then we can also go filter texture, we can add some textures that are stock in Photoshop. If we wanted to, yeah, it's kind of nice. But here, see our, all the textures that we can do. I usually love this tile one because it gives it kind of a Kind of a rustic look that I tend to like, so let's choose OK with that. Yep, nope, don't like it. So edit, undo. Let's just say we're going to leave it like that. So that is how you make a rustic frame in Photoshop out of their stock frames that we have here. And again, you know, this you can move around. If you can't find it, if it isn't anywhere in your stuff, all your choices are up here under Windows. You've got your adjustments, your color swatches, content, effects, favorites, histogram, just all this stuff. So, and I like everybody else. I'm always discovering new things. So, and everything I learned is from tutorials on YouTube. So, this is my giving back to all you wonderful tutorial people. Hopefully, I can do you proud. So, thanks, guys. Have a great one. Bye.